The question for this uh, recording is, I practice and chant Ho'oponopono in my mind, but still, I am still unable to forget past mistakes, sin and worry, whether these will surface in the future. I always say, I am sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you, divine light. Change, and it is done. I am tense and have no idea whether my past mistakes will be forgiven via Ho'oponopono. It's an interesting and important question. I would like to clarify that, at least for me, Ho'oponopono has nothing to do with guilt, or with sin, or with punishment. It has only to do with the acceptance of responsibility for the creation of our reality. That the world around us reflects certain aspects of ourselves, which could have nothing to do with guilt or evil. For example, if I fear something, I can attract it. Or if I reject something, or if I feel guilt about something, I can attract it. Or if I haven't healed a childhood experience, I could repeatedly attract that experience later on in life. Uh, or if I don't respect myself, I could attract a lack of respect from other people. So we're not talking about sin here. We're not talking about evil. We talk simply about the, the reflection of our inner world and our external reality. So there is no need to feel guilt. There is no need to doubt that you are loved by the Divine exactly as you are. The Divine understands the difficulty of functioning in a physical body, the difficulty of functioning in this dimension of time and space where we feel separate from other beings and we develop certain kinds of defensive strategies such as anger or telling lies. All of these are understood by God, by the Divine, <clears throat> by all of the higher souls and no one rejects us. No one condemns us. <clears throat> so first of all we have to let go of this misperception about guilt about punishment, about a God who is unable to love all beings as they are, as he himself or herself or itself has created. So I suggest another method for letting go of guilt. It has six stages. First stage, to determine what I have done, to see what I have done, which I don't agree with for which I feel guilty and feel that I have behaved in a way that I would not like others to behave to me. Second step, ask forgiveness from those people who I may have harmed. If they have left their body, I can still ask forgiveness mentally or even in a, in a letter of some type and then burn it. Third step, discover the beliefs the emotions and the needs which caused me to behave in that way. For example, fear of losing my self-worth, fear for my security, fear of rejection, fear for my freedom. And because I fear, I react in an aggressive way or in a non-truthful way. So the main cause of our negative reactions is fear. Another cause of our negative reaction is intense desire. We desire something very much and we're in the illusion that that can bring us happiness and that we can be happy only with that towards which we are feeling this desire. For example, a man or a woman who would cheat on his wife or her husband because they can't overcome the desire for another person. 
So the causes of our behaviors which are out of alignment with our higher self are either emotions, mainly fear and guilt, and secondly, intense desire. So the third step is to recognize what are the factors which caused me in the past to behave in this way. The fourth step is to discover a new way of thinking, a new belief system so that I don't feel those emotions or those desires in the same situations. That is to find a new way of perceiving those situations in which in the past I found myself behaving in ways which I do not condone myself. So this is the actual transformation that we are looking for. That is, we are using now this experience in which we have not behaved in the highest way that we can perceive as a means for self-knowledge and for discovering the new way of perceiving life and ourselves and others which will allow us to continue in our evolutionary past. Um, and so for me this is the main aspect of this process that is discovering and imagining myself functioning in a new way which is in total alignment with my higher values. The fifth step is to forgive myself. I have the right to forgive myself because I have used this experience as a growth experience and that's why the experience exists. We are being asked to use experiences in which other people have uh, abused us as learning experiences and to be able to forgive them and understand them. And in the same way, we're being asked to forgive ourselves for the situations in which we have not behaved in the highest way that we can imagine. So in both cases, when the, we are the abused and we are the abuser, in both cases, both cases, these are opportunities for growth and evolution, which is the only real thing that's happening here. The sixth stage is to realize that I wasn't guilty in the first place. I wasn't guilty for two reasons. I cannot create the reality of another person. I am responsible for my actions. I am responsible for my thoughts, the ways in which I have functioned. And those actions and thoughts will have their consequences through the law of karma and through the law of cause and effect in this physical reality. But that's not a matter of punishment. That's a matter, it's a learning mechanism. I learn by receiving from the world around me and the people around me the result of my behavior towards others. So there is no punishment in karma. There is only a learning possibility, a learning probability, for which I have free will. I can learn or I cannot learn. I can repeat this experience hundreds of times and not learn anything. But I cannot create the reality of the other person. And the other person cannot create my reality. We can offer the other stimuli, events, which can happen only if it's their karma, if their soul choice, or if it's a reflection of their own inner world. And they can offer us stimuli, which are the results of our karma, and our soul choices, and our inner world. So. I am the creator of my reality, and that's the whole ponopono, and the others are the creators of their reality. And I am just the means for them to experience various experiences which offer them the possibilities to grow, and they are simply the means for me to have experiences which offer me the possibility of growth. But we always have free will. We can choose not to grow. We can choose to feel bitter and angry and hurt and also guilty and fearful. So we are never the creators of other persons' realities. We are the stimulus. And others are never the creators of our reality. They are the stimulus of our reality. The other reason that we were not guilty in the first place is because we are not these bodies and we are not these minds. We are this divine consciousness which is behind the body and the mind. The example here is the light of the projector 
at the movie theater. Um, this light goes through the film and the film changes the light and creates images which appear on the screen. The light is our true self, our divine self. The film is our mind and the images on the screen is our body and our actions. So whatever, however that film changes the light, distorts it or limits it or diminishes it. And whatever that image on the screen does, the light behind the projector, behind the film, never changes. So this is our steady source of uh, divinity, of purity, of love, of security. This is who we are, this consciousness behind the physical body, behind the mind. So the mind may have made mistakes, and the body may have made mistakes. <clears throat> and those mistakes will have consequences in this physical dimension. And we need to ask forgiveness for those mistakes. But they're mistakes. They're lack of awareness of our true being, the lack of awareness of the other person's true being. They do not remove us from the, the circle of God's love. That cannot be done. We can never be removed from divine love. So, yes, we made mistakes. Yes, we have to ask forgiveness. We have to find a new way of functioning. But we also need to recognize that our true self is pure, is divine, is innocent. Because our pure self is the light behind the mind and behind the body. So, Ho'oponopono is not for removing sin. It's for removing the causes within us which create the external reality that we want to correct. It means to correct. Okay? So I would suggest these six stages. Realize what you have done, what you don't agree with. Ask forgiveness. <clears throat> Find the reasons that you have behaved in this way. Find new ways of thinking that allow you to behave in different ways. Forgive yourself and connect with your inner innocence. Be well.